Hi and welcome to Life with Layla. This is a featured guest video. It's the first one I've done and I'm really excited to introduce to you the person that I'm going to be talking to. Weaning can be a daunting time for anybody, even if it's not your first time. We're in the middle of a global pandemic, so a lot of parents have felt isolated and excluded from sources of support and advice. And lots of people have turned to social media to find out more information about weaning or to help them through a certain stage of weaning that they are struggling with. The person I'm going to talk to today is called Bex. She is a mum of two young children. She's a working mum and she has somehow found the time to document her journey uh, weaning her second child, Finn on Instagram. She's also written blogs. She has managed to bring together a community of weaning parents that share recipes and share tips and advice with each other in a really supportive and comforting way. She also is currently studying paediatric nutrition and it's an area that she's really passionate about. Through her journey on social media, she is also working with some fantastic baby related brands and companies and I would like to share those with you in the description box below. Uh, but you can head over to her Instagram account if that's something that you want to find out more about. So without further ado, here is Bex and my first question for her was, how prepared did you feel when you started weaning? I think because Finn's like my second, I was a little bit prepared, but I was still nervous because it's a different child and I don't know, I think I felt when I was pregnant that it was my first time and I forgot everything, even though there's only like five years between them. I thought, oh, I've never done this before, but oh, actually I have done it before and I just needed to relax and remember that. But with Eva, she was um, lactose intolerant, so and a first time mom, I felt really overwhelmed by that. Yeah. Back then, I was fortunate that you know the world wasn't in a pandemic, and there was a lot of help and support out there for that. So when I came to weaning Finn, I knew more what I wouldn't do rather than what I was going to do based on how I did it with Eva. Yeah, because like for us, weaning was easy for Finn it was before that it was the milk issue he yeah. just wouldn't drink milk so we had hospital admissions he lost loads of weight he's generally a smaller baby anyway compared to everybody else's age so we had that issue where he had to be tube fed because he just wouldn't latch onto me or a bottle he was taking like 10 mil 20 mil at a time and he'd want, obviously, you'd be so hungry after we fed like every hour, every two hours. How scary for you. Yeah, it was really scary. And obviously dealing with all that in a pandemic, because obviously we were admitted in hospital then and not having like my husband to come and visit and things like that. But then also having mom guilt of Eva being at home. And I feel like, oh, she must think I've abandoned her now. I've had a new baby. And oh, it was just awful. But yeah. him seemed... I was so looking forward to weaning because he's not been a big milk drinker and that was that was the real battle, just trying to get him through to that stage. And I didn't want to do early weaning like the dietitians wanted to do because they were saying, obviously from four months we could try purees and things like that. But I did look into that and really is is like a blended carrot more nutritious than this full fat prescribed special formula that he had to have from our consultant. It's like, you know what, I'm gonna battle on for another two months of no sleep, practically feeding him every hour on the hour. And and then when it came to weaning him, it was just it was natural for him. Like he just like he just knew what to do. The only thing that I've always been nervous about is choking. That's my biggest fear and I don't think it will ever go to be honest I think even when the kids are both 35 I'll be cutting the sausages up and things like that I, mean, I just it's one of my biggest fears and I've tried to overcome it through like um, courses like first aid courses and loads of things like that but it's still it's always in the back of my mind 
And that's interesting that you say that because you actually chose to do baby led weaning with Finn. So yeah. that was really brave of you considering you're so nervous about the choking. What made you decide to do baby led weaning despite feeling that way? I looked into it and actually the research that I found was either way, there's still a choking risk. Um, so whether I was spoon feeding purees or whether it was, you know, full on like baby led weaning, there's still that, that risk and the benefits to baby led weaning just outweighed it for me. And I thought, well, it's more beneficial for Finn. So I need to overcome it myself for the benefit of him. And I thought if I was prepared and I tried to relax, then it would go smoothly. And with Eva as well, I did start out doing the purees with her because I think that was more my confidence being a first time mom. I was really nervous. And she actually, being a girl, is really independent and she was just having none of it with it like, like with the purees. So she chose her path and I had to learn quickly with her. And so I had to do that, that like transition between purees and then lumps, textures. And that, I found that actually more stressful and overwhelming than just going for it and trusting my instinct and more trusting Finn and trusting him in his own ability. There's probably lots of parents that feel the same as you did. Um, but I guess, you know, on the other side of it, you can look back and say, just go with it. Just try, try your best and, and do your research so that you do know what to do yeah. if something happens. Um, and that and that's the best way to go. So knowing that and you you did your research on your baby led weaning and you started with Finn, was it all plain sailing or was there were, were there any speed bumps that you had to, to overcome apart from the choking? <laughs> no, I mean for him it's actually surprisingly gone really well. Um, there's been there hasn't been a choking incident or anything like that. Obviously the usual gagging, the normal type gagging that you get, that's normal. And that probably happens one or two times. But in terms of him trying foods, um, he's not fussy with anything at all. He's completely the opposite to my daughter. He will eat everything. And it's given me the confidence to experiment as well. I've really enjoyed the cooking and the, doing the meals for him and things like that. So it's been a whole thing as a family as well. It wasn't just his journey, it was our journey as like a family. So it's been really enjoyable. And how good is your husband at helping out with the, with the, uh, the weaning process? He's really good. He was more nervous about gagging and choking at first. So he wasn't allowed to sit next to Finn when we were <laughs> well, it was always me. But now I'm back at work, then like my husband does help and he's like followed what I've been doing and he'll like take the pictures for me and send them to me. Um, so he's, he is really supportive. Oh, that's fantastic. So Bex, I found you on Instagram and you are one of the uh, accounts that I just find really inspirational. What made you want to start documenting your journey with Finn on your social media? I think at the start it was just more of a personal thing because um, Finn was born and then six weeks after we went into lockdown so obviously we were still in lockdown when it was weaning time and I just wanted to document our little journey. I felt like we were in our own little bubble anyway and like family could then follow us on Instagram and see his weaning journey. He hadn't really met all the family at that point either. So it was nice that they could be involved in that journey. And I quickly found that actually taking photos was a great way to keep up with first foods, not to repeat meals all the time, have a little bit of variety. And then it just started to grow. I started to follow other accounts that were similar and it, it quickly grew into like a supportive network really, really quickly. And a lot of people were contacting me, which was nice. And it started off small and it has since you know, progressed. 
how supportive was that network and how important do you think social media is for mums like you that are feeling a bit isolated um, and starting their weaning journey with a few reservations how do you feel that the social media network that you developed supported you i think because we were in lockdown i was finding it was a lot of first-time parents contacting me about advice and tips and they just didn't know where to start and at first i was like mm, i'm i'm just a mom i'm not a professional you know i'm, I'm i've not got any qualifications in child weaning nutrition or anything like that but then the feedback i was getting was well that's what we want we just want a real parent to help us because they felt overwhelmed and a little bit intimidated by the professionals on instagram that were talking about all these big words and things like that when really they just wanted to know how to cut a banana up and things mm. like that um so and I think they felt less intimidated and that's what they were saying you know you're just a, a normal real mom and and that was nice and so my confidence grew from that I started following an amazing account which is Nanny Ash I started following her and her amazing recipes which I've always trialed and you know tried to do for myself and um, I started to get to know her as a person behind her account as well and relationship has grown and I class her as a great friend now um, and I just that has progressed into me then doing the weaning Wednesday which I do every Wednesday and um, the idea is to promote other weaning accounts so a, a quick one-stop way for everybody to find like different accounts that they can follow that they can get inspiration from and it's just like a, a celebration of what we're all doing. We're all trying to do it. We're all trying to just, you know, get through parenting. Why not try and get through it together? And it's just an easy way rather than trying to find these accounts for yourself. If I can share all these amazing accounts, all the amazing recipes and ideas that everybody has to try and cr like, create like a, like a, a community on Instagram, I just thought that would be absolutely brilliant. And it, it started off small and it's progressed really, really well to the point where I have been struggling to keep up with it every Wednesday. And it did get a bit crazy at one point. And I did reach out for somebody that I've been following for a while. She's such a passionate person and I love her meals. I love how, you know, she does have like a vegetarian account and she's passionate about that. And, and I thought she is the kind of person that I would like to get on board with Weaning Wednesday. So I approached Kelly and she luckily accepted. And yes, yeah, so we are now a team for Weaning Wednesday and we've got lots of ideas and lots of things coming up in the future. So exciting and you're a great team and the fact that you are both working mums so battling to you know work and, and have your children and do these amazing weaning dishes every day and <laughs> that's fantastic it's inspirational for all of us um, from a personal viewpoint the weaning Wednesdays was something I was so happy to stumble across because although I've this is my third time weaning um, with Scarlett my first I was very creative I you know thought up loads because I had the, a bit more time Ruby came along and I was rabbit in the headlights and now Jacob's come along and I can't even I don't have time to think about you know what's happening next let alone what I'm making for the next meal mm -hmm. and Weaning Wednesdays has allowed me to find other accounts that show me their amazing meals and I just pick one <laughs> and I go, right making that today and that's that's how it's benefited me personally but there's so many things that can come out of it so after weaning went I mean you're still doing weaning Wednesdays but what else what else have you done since you've you know developed your Instagram account so I've also started feature Friday uh, because I thought the weaning Wednesday is good but it's just like a snapshot and so what I like and what I found through different accounts is I'd love to get to know the person behind the account um, and 
I think, you know, parents need that recognition as well. It's great to find out what they're feeding their children, but who are these people? And are they just normal, regular parents as well? So I did, I have set up like a separate account, um, like my Feature Friday one, where it is all about other people. It's not about me and Finn or anything what we do. And everybody has the opportunity to tell us their weaning story. And there's been some amazing people, like people that have battled like different challenges and how they've overcome it. And it's lovely to see that, you know, we're all just in it together and we're either winging it um, and getting through it together. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just lovely to see that person, that family, where they've come from, what, what their weaning journey has been, whether it's just their first time or they're weaning with twins or there's been some like medical issue and that's impacted their weaning journey and how they've got around that. I just think it's, nice to give a little shout out and a little bit of recognition to celebrate you know parenting and trying to survive <laughs> so you see all these amazing meals all the time but you are quite handy in the kitchen yourself and i believe you're going to share one of your creations with me yes i am yes i wouldn't say i was the best cook but i um I am quite a creative person anyway, so I feel like I've got more creativity and the, the cooking and food has just sort of followed with me. <laughs> That's how I feel it's gone. Excellent. Well, Finn doesn't seem to mind. So <laughs> uh, what, what are we going to cook today? So my favourite one that I know that everybody loves is my baby lasagna bites. And I sort of created this on a whim and it was successful, luckily, but Lasagna is a food that we love as a family, but it's so messy, especially for baby led weaning, which I know you can't get away from the mess, but it was more, how could Finn feed himself with it? And he struggled at first to pick it up and obviously it's messy. It's quite like a, there's a lot of sauce, isn't there? It's quite more of a wet type of meal. So I sort of adapted it for his little hands so he could pick it up. Um, and it's been really successful. He, he loves it and it's actually a lot less messier than just a normal lasagna. Perfect. So what do we need? You need, oh my God, I, sh I, sh I should have printed this out, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so you need just um, lasagna sheets. The fresh ones are the best. Um, and the trick is using a muffin tray and you will line the muffin trays with your lasagna sheets. And however you um, cook your mince or whatever you want to use, you just fill it up, fill each cup with the mince that way, um, and then spoon everything on top. So it is a little bit tricky, a little bit technical, maybe just to get it in. And the, the cooking, you've got to be careful you don't overcook it because it will go hard around the edges, but they do snap off quite well. So there's no risk of choking or anything like that with it. And I guess you could make it a vegetarian option with like corn or something. Yeah, like definitely. And I do have on my page a way of making it dairy free, a way of making it um, vegetarian. And um, so there's lots of different ways that you can, you know, adapt that recipe as well. So it's all on my page. And even if it's fiddly, you could make loads and loads of it and then freeze it. So obviously the next time you make it, it's not so fiddly. Yeah, I generally make about 24 of them and then I just do put them in the freezer. I just love batch cooking and having that sort of knowing that it's in there and, you know, I'm a little, feel a bit more organised with like, the rush from work and everybody's eating healthy still, but it's all done. It's like a lot convenient. So, yeah, I do make 24 at a time. Yeah, oh, that's good. And how many do you actually freeze and how many you just shove in your mouth when nobody's looking? <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot actually. Because the first time I did them, my husband loved them and he, he ate about six. <laughs> I was like, oh, they've gone quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Bex. And I've had such a lovely chat with you. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, and I'll make sure that everybody knows where to come and find out more information from you. Um, and... Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been great chatting to you.
Thank you so much for watching. I think you'll agree that Bex is a really lovely person. I've really enjoyed my chat with her. If you want to find out a little bit more information about what she's been up to and uh, some of the accounts that she's been working with, or if you just want to join in with the Weaning Wednesdays and just build yourself a little network of weaning support and advice, then do head over to Bex's Instagram account at Feeding Finn. In future videos, I'll be talking to other mums, hopefully dads, if you're a dad and you want to talk to me, please comment in the description box, I'd love to hear from you. But also professionals about different angles of weaning from when it's going great to when it's not going so great. So please stay tuned and join me again for another featured guest video coming soon on Life with Layla. Bye!